So I had the iPhone 11 Pro Max for a little bit over two months, right around two months. And I wanted to give my feedback after having this thing for a long time. I mean, I was a long time Android user. I mean, that's, that's just what I did. I just had Android phones. That was it. That's all I ever had. And now I'm using iPhones, which is kind of crazy to me. And I have a lot of thoughts. Again, I did kind of a quick follow-up shortly after the, I got this thing. But with more time, I have a lot more thoughts. And I'll tell you what they are. Right after this. This, this is, you know you listening to, to Travis. What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. Now, like I said, for a very long time, I was an Android user, and I'm talking about all the way back to the G1. I bet a lot of you don't even know what the G1 is. And I've always loved Android, the ability to change things, to customize, to do all the things. But I did notice over the last year or so that a lot of the things that Android gives you the ability to do, I just didn't use. It wasn't that I didn't appreciate them, I absolutely did, but I just didn't need them. And the perfect storm happened when Apple released the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro and Pro Max this particular year where this is the year I fell. I, I, I you know, I, listen, I blamed Samsung for this and I still do this day because the OnePlus 7 Pro was my favorite phone of the year. I loved it. I had no reason to use any other phone, period, end of story. Then the Note 10 came out. And since I was a long time Note user, since the Galaxy Note 2, uh, I felt compelled to buy it. Plus I had a YouTube channel. I'll be really honest. If I did not have a YouTube channel, I would not have bought the Note 10. I would still be on the OnePlus 7 Pro. I would not have bought the iPhone. But because I switched phones, and then I was on a phone that I wasn't completely happy with. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a Note 10, uh, the Note 10 Plus. I mean, they're fine. I just, I just didn't like it as much as I liked the OnePlus 7 Pro. So with the opportunity to go from that to another phone, I decided to try Apple. And here I am two months later still using it and I still love it. Like I have no problems with it. Um, of course, there are some little bugs here and there. iOS 13 has not been an excellent experience all the way across the board. But there are a lot of things that I really appreciate and enjoy using an iPhone that I did not get when I was using Android, I'll explain. Now, while I do miss things like being able to take out my S Pen and take a note real quick with screen off, which is one of my favorite features from the Note series, um, I don't really need that, to be honest. Like, I only use it every so often. And as much as I love the S Pen, again, another thing that almost never happened was me pulling out the S Pen. Like, I would go days without ever pulling out the S Pen, even though I would tell everyone it was like the best thing ever. If you're not using it, it's not really the best thing ever. You know what I mean? What I found myself needing were really just ordinary things, things that I just wanted to work and be able to rely on. I wanted the camera to be good. I wanted the video to be excellent. I wanted a little bit of integration. I wanted reliability and I just wanted speed. All of these things, with the exception of some bugs on iOS 13, have been the case with the, I, with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And one thing that I hadn't really thought too much about, but just assumed was battery life. And to this day, this is still the best battery life on any phone I've ever gotten ever. And some people get triggered by this. I only charge my phone every other day. I, I don't know if that's gonna work for you. I don't know what your phone usage is. I do like look outside of my phone at life sometimes, so I'm not on it 24 seven, but I have not charged this phone every day since I think the third day that I got it. And that's only because I wasn't sure that I could get away with it. But I literally for the last month and a half have only charged this phone every other day. That means I can rely on it when I'm super far away from charging, which I may be when I do some traveling here soon. So I'm really, really happy about the battery life on this thing. Plus I just know everything works and there's apps that are always on iOS that sometimes aren't even on Android yet, which kind of frustrates me because there's even Android specific apps, you know, apps from Amazon who puts their software on top of Android that release their software first on iOS. And they're not the only company to do this. So I just know that my apps are going to work and there are some apps that are on iOS only that aren't on Android. Again, not something I'm super happy about, but it is what it is. One of those being the software that I use to edit all my videos, LumaFusion. I love LumaFusion. I have no interest in going back and editing my videos on a computer. Doing it on an iPad's amazing. And now that I can airdrop any extra videos that I can take with my iPhone directly to my iPad, this becomes like heaven. 
I will say this, while I love pretty much everything else about the iPhone, especially iMessage, which let me real quick, just let me, let's talk about that for a second. I have now found how many people I know that actually have iPhones just by being able to text them and seeing the, uh, the color bubbles. I talked about this before, the bubble thing is kind of funky, but the fact that I can send full image from text, which is something you can't really do reliably on an Android, is, is pretty cool. And some people will say, well, RCS is out now. Yeah, but not everyone has it. You know what I mean? Like, you ain't sending full quality video and pictures to every single person on your list. It's just not the case. But if you have iOS, uh, it is the case. Updates are really important. And when this thing has bugs, you can rely on an update coming out. Android has always had this problem. And while Google is trying to fix it, the reality is it's still a problem. You don't know when you're getting the next update on Android because Google has to make it. Then your manufacturer has to do something to it then your carrier has to approve it. That is ridiculous. You don't have that. Literally every single person on a compatible phone can get the update the same day on Apple, and there's nothing you can argue against that. It's terrible on the Android side of things. Let's just be real. Having said that, not everything is perfect on the iPhone. Like I said, there have been bugs on iOS 13. I do miss Samsung Pay. I love Samsung Pay. I do miss it. Uh, and probably most importantly, I still don't like the notification shade. Like, for some reason, notifications in Android just feel better and they feel like they can be, I don't know, um, actioned on better or something. I, it might just be me, but I just feel like notifications on Android are just plain better. And yeah, I do miss like having a place where all my apps are rather than all, all over my screen. It's really strange that for a company that is so obsessed with like the user experience, they just plaster all your apps across a whole bunch of screens on your phone and on your tablet. It just looks terrible. And yeah, I get it. You can put them in a folder, but that's not, that's not good enough. I think that Apple is so close on some things and just so far away on others, it just makes me wonder what the heck's going on. But at the end of the day, I absolutely still love this phone. The performance is there. The camera quality is there. Everything I needed to do is there. The integration with my iPad is there, which is great. The, inter the integration with my Apple Watch is there. It's great. Everything that this thing can do is, is just great for me. Is it gonna be enough for you? Maybe not. Maybe you're an Android lover and it just doesn't do everything that you like it to do. That's fine. No big deal. That's fine. It's okay. There's a phone out there for you. You don't have to get triggered. But for me, I absolutely love this phone. I'm super excited to be on this side of the fence, but I'm even more excited to see what happens next year with things like the S11. Will the S11 pull me away from the Apple iPhone 11? That would be pretty interesting. So what do you think? Is it possible that the new Android phones coming out in 2020 will pull me away from the iPhone? I mean, I love the iPhone, but listen, I love the new hotness. I don't care who's making it. So let's find out together. If this video helped you out in any way, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if it didn't, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. I'm here every single week having a blast. Hope to see you again real soon. Peace and love, peace and love. And we out, baby.